make sure that absolutely everything is clean. So it goes through this three, these three processes all the time. Every single utensil we use, every time, goes through this system of wash, sterilize, rinse. And the reason it's so important to rinse is, of course, that you don't want to kill your good bacteria that you put in the water. So it's very important to rinse everything well. So these bacteria are introduced and they start livening up and then they start utilizing the sugar in the milk, which is called lactose, and produce lactic acid. One packet is enough for 500 liters for most cheeses, but um, we only have 10 liters here. We've worked out that what works is a third of a small teaspoon per 10 liters and two thirds of a small teaspoon. In general, yeah, we are pre-ripening, so we're allowing the culture to wake up. They've been frozen in the deep freeze. They, they must come alive, and we're giving them an hour to do that in. Now, this is a dropper bottle. So this is now kitchen making cheese in the kitchen, and we can measure the drops. And for this rennet, which is the animal rennet. It's four drops per liter. So we have 10 liters, so we need 40 drops. Okay, this is now diluted. We're going to add it to the milk, and that's going to coagulate the milk. It's going to make the protein stick together. It's actually at 33 now, but I'm going to add it because it's um, such a cold day. Okay, it's coagulated. Can everybody must please come and have a look. So we cut the curd with a knife and we just cut down and across. Just go right down to the bottom, cross up. And the reason we're cutting it is because it's formed that lattice work as a result of the rennet, making the proteins stick together. And now we are cutting those proteins and we're letting the whey come out. If you like a soft feta, then you will cut a bigger curd. If you like a dry feta, you make a smaller curd. So it depends what type of feta you like. Because remember yesterday we said the smaller you cut the curd, the drier the cheese. It just makes sense. There's going to be more water coming out of the curd if you cut smaller curds. And so if you like a dry feta, you cut a smaller curd. I like a fairly crumbly feta because that's the way I used it from way back. I traveled in Greece and their feta was quite crumbly. Now we've got this Danish feta, which is very soft. So people are getting used to a softer feta. And therefore, if you like a softer feta, you must cut a bigger curd. You must not cut as small as this. <laughs> See, it is still quite big. It's bigger than yesterday. Mm -hmm. Bigger than the garden. Mm -hmm. So what we do now is we simply leave the curd and the whey until there is half curd and half whey. Yeah. You have a look at the curd. You see that it's dull, it's not shiny anymore. A little bit of shininess to it is mostly dull. It actually looks perfect because it's a more acid cheese, better, far more acid. Yes, sir. I'm now going to pour off the whey and 
then, once I've poured it all, now I've got a whole for you. I hope I don't spill this creamy stuff on you. Another way to do it is to use one mold and just pour it into the others. You want to turn it, put it on the back of your pan, get it all over, put it in, put the lid on. It's already knacking together. Mm -hmm. So you put it on, on the power of your hand, you let it roll, and you put it, the lid on. But in the beginning, you test it. And the way you test it is like this, there's always some liquid dripping out. It's not, not very acid yet. You know, the more yellow it is, the more acid it is. What you do once it has, say now it's at 4.6, then you pack them into a bucket like this, on top of each other, next to each other, all the way to the top, and then you wash your molds, and then you take your 10% per gram salt per 5 litre water, add your calcium chloride, add your acid, so you make a brine, and then you pour that brine over the cheese and you pour it to the top and you put the lid on and you store it at 12 degrees and that's how you mature it. Then when you want to sell it, you make a fresh 5% solution, not 10. And then you put your feta in the ring lock tub and you put in some of the 5%, close it, label it, sell it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you add calcium chloride to the brine because it stops the calcium from leaking out of the cheese and into the water. It creates a gradient. If you don't add calcium chloride to your brine, the calcium from your cheese will leak out into the water and your cheese will become slimy and particularly feta. Feta will melt in the brine if you don't add calcium to the brine.